Hi, yeah, how you doing? James here today. I'm just going to take you through a detachable socket mod I did on a pair of Ultrasone Edition 8s. These are quite a pricey pair of headphones, but I didn't really know it while I was working on them, so you'll see me recklessly tearing into them. And uh, I, I suppose I would have done it a bit differently had I gone in knowing that these are about £700 uh, plus. They're quite rare now. Um, so you see me rip off the front here and I'm actually quite shocked at this moment because they look amazingly cheap. You see that driver, we got those for about 50p and they're constructed really similarly to the ones in here. The outer casing is actually uh, sort of metalised plastic, that white plastic that they spray a coating of metal on and that, that's just always seemed incredibly cheap to me. So whilst I was sort of ripping into these I, I sort of... Had, had the impression that they were maybe 50 quid headphones um, but yeah you can see I get the socket in here and it almost looks like it was made for one it slots right in there which is quite nice and I'm thinking oh this will be an easy job but here we go no it's not and uh, yeah this is the struggle for the rest of the video it contacts with the driver here the driver's placed very low down in this uh, this front plate here and it doesn't you can't move it obviously because it's to do with the tuning. You can see there's two holes at the top. They're doing some sort of sound reflection here to get some quite interesting results and it, to be fair they do sound excellent. Um, but I didn't get to listen to them until after I'd finished the mod because the cable, stock cable was broken. So as much as they look like they're ready to accept a socket right away, here I am having to drill right into them. Uh, it's yeah, You can really see the white plastic here and it feels all nasty and cheap and horrible and uh, yeah it grinds away it's quite a thick outer metal coating but yeah it just doesn't it's not great remove the burrs there see if the socket will fit uh, you saw me paint some red onto the driver there and uh, squish them together some of the red ink transfers onto the socket and uh, that shows me where it's where it's interfering where it's making contact so I, th I think I'm clever here and I uh, chop away a little bit of the socket and I think yeah there we go it pops right in and I'm thinking oh brilliant yeah look at that smug little thumbs up I give the camera um, so I think oh I'll just test these give it a go and pop there we go <laughs> half of the assembly comes right out the back so that socket's useless now I've broken that uh, I don't quite know at the time I'm trying to repair it shove the little thing back in but yeah there's no way that thing's done and over um, yeah, you can see me sort of floundering about here. I'm back to step one. Not quite sure what I'm going to do. Uh, seeing if it'll fit, but no, that's not that's not happening. No way. Um, so whilst I faff around with this, I suddenly found where all the money went, and it's here. It's into this little hinge bit, which is just gorgeous. Look at that. A perfectly machined, lovely bit of engineering. Uh, that that down bit. That's one single piece that logoed part that's a continuation so that's one fairly large bit of aluminium that they've just had to sort of chop away at cnc that and it's quite, it's curved it's like nice surface finish that's a oh, that's a ridiculously expensive part to make and i feel like that could have been done a lot cheaper but they they chose to make it as nice it is, as it is and then they they cheaped out on the bits that matter so it's, it really is quite a strange headphone, but it does sound great. So I've gone for a second round with the ink here, and uh, it is working a bit better. I'm just I'm just going to nibble away at it this time instead of taking a whole chunk out the side. And uh, I think this is the time that I I do get it to work in the end. But really, it's uh, yeah. Does it go this time? Yeah, it does. It doesn't pop in this time, but I'm quite happy with the fitment. And uh, yeah, you can see I've had to have moved it quite far down. I've hogged out a fair bit of that plastic with the Dremel there. And there we go. There's it all glued in and wired up and ready to accept the uh, the face plates back on. And here they are all ready to go. But I always thought that, that little uh, piece of felt that they've got there it reminded me of the Wu-Tang Clan logo the whole time I was working on it. Yes, there we go. I'm whipping off the original, the original wires. That, that's always a, a tough bit because you can quite easily, uh, if you heat them up too much, then the original coil wires are broken, and there's there's nothing you can do after that. That's uh, that's the end of your seven hundred pound pair of headphones right there. So that's one side done. And I'm just going to move on to the other side, soldering those wires on, get it all connected on the inside, 
and pop it all back together. These these went together all right after I'd uh, done all the modification. I just screw the face plates back on. There's three screws, and yeah, look at the handiwork. It's, it's all right. Not not my best work, I suppose. Um, I just pop these felt pads back on, and then the, uh, the this didn't really work. I ended up having to go back and uh, put some tape on to probably hold these on. But for now, yeah, there we go. There's the tape on them. And that's them all done. So I hope that was interesting to watch. It wasn't too difficult of a mod. Um, it was a bit of a faff to get them in, but uh, otherwise it wasn't. They, they come apart all right. Uh, so I hope that was interesting, and thanks for watching. See you next time.